Hey, everybody, welcome to the bonus video. If you haven't checked out the full podcast with Cole yet, check the description. I'll have a link in there. Go watch that first because in this bonus video, Cole's going to give us some behind the scenes look on three of the songs that he talked about in that video. Mm -hmm. So go check that out first. And then everybody coming over from the video, thank you. We appreciate it. And Cole, I'll, I'll leave it to you. So go ahead and tell us. We were talking before we started. You want to give us a little more detail on your three favorite songs from It yeah. Never Gets Easy. Yeah. So the first one I picked was Fine. And I really like that one because uh, towards the right at the end of the album, I was got, started getting like really into uh, like country and like folk songs and stuff. And that song was like really influenced by like George Harrison and like during the headlights. So I had like an idea of like having like a steel guitar or something, but we didn't really have like the budget while recording to like hire a steel guitar player or something. So actually like a, he had like this slide. So I ended up just like recording slide guitar for like the verse, and like the last chorus. And I'd like never really played slide guitar before. So it took a lot of tries, but we ended up getting it down. It sounds like really, really cool. So I, I, I just like love the way that song sounds. I always like tell people that's my, uh, my country song on their record. But uh, I, th I think that's cool. I think that's like a foreshadow for some of the stuff's coming on on the new record. I definitely want to have some, some like more country songs, mixed in with some more like rocky ones. But uh, yeah, I really like that one for like that aspect. I think that was like a good like laid back like. And I like also like how like the acoustics in the forefront, like kind of driving the song, because that's not something we've ever really done before. So yeah, and then uh, my second one was Blood of Jesus. I, I really like that one because that's probably like my favorite like chord progression i think it's just like super catchy and uh that sounds like in a different tuning than any of the other songs we use like four different tunings on the record which is going to be fun to do live like bringing four guitars but um i like wanted to learn the song mayonnaise by smashing pumpkins it's like the coolest smashing pumpkin song and i was trying to learn how to play and they use this really weird tuning where it's like three of the strings are tuned to the same note and like the last string is tuned down like half a step and it sounds like really really cool but you can only you can only play in like one key so i started messing around and like kind of came with this chord progression that was different than mayonnaise but kind of sounds similar to it and um i think that one's like kind of funny because it's like a song about like leaving christianity but it kind of sounds like a worship song because it's only you hear at church so it's like a fun fun paradox there yeah i noticed that Again, the chorus is great in that, and that one has a really full sound to it as well. Yeah. And it talks, I guess it talks about the struggles of people that do leave religion. And, you know, you got yeah. the one line, like, you know, the line about being the same, just less confused. When, yeah. you, when you took that influence from Manny's, did you use that same type of tuning for that? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's the same tuning from Manny's. Okay. It's like that 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 weird one. I I don't think I think they might have invented that tuning just for that song. But yeah, that 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 one's a uh, I like that one. That that was actually the last song that I wrote for the record. And so that, that was probably like my favorite. Like going into recording, then I ended up liking other songs like after they recorded. But yeah, it's it's like about like a uh, it's not like sh like shitting on Christianity thing. It's like a uh, it's basically just like why I left the church and like why I think there's like holes in the philosophy of it. Like. Uh, like the like the satire in the second verse about like kind of predestination and stuff like that it doesn't get like too deep into it but um yeah i i, I like that song lyrically a lot because it's like one of the only ones that is like deep and then that's not about like a relationship or something right yeah <laughs> completely different material and, uh, yeah so I, I like that one because like how different the lyrics are and how like different the vibe is and i really like the like the chorus production not chorus progression not production <laughs> And then, so that takes us to your third favorite. Yep. So, yeah, I Don't Need You. That was one of my favorites, too. And I fought with my drummer about that song because he didn't like it because it was so slow. And that was called, like, the coffee shop demo when I wrote it. So I, like, imagined, like, a co like people playing, like, a coffee shop. So it's, like, kind of, like, jazzy. It kind of sounds like a John Mayer song. Like, when we got into the studio, like, me and my uh, bass player, like, what did that sound like with, like, all program drones? Because uh, in Fall Start, the verses, like, are sampled with real drums but they're programmed to sound like super on time like like kind of like queens of the stone age and that was done on purpose like we wanted to make it sound like it was on a grid like microwave did that on their last record so like we made like the entire song like we went like a step forward We're like what if we programmed the whole thing but then like like programming with like rap drums so we use like a rap drum sample and that's like why it sounds like a like kind of like a pop song so um 
I, I really like that the way that one turned out because I think that was like a really really cool idea that we had in the studio even though our producer wasn't stoked about that because <laughs> he didn't want it but it's okay it I really turned like out great yeah I like that you took that I don't know if I'd call it a chance, but you kind of bridge that gap of using, like you were saying, drums that would traditionally be used for yeah. like a hip hop rap type record yeah. and making it fit your sound and your style. Yeah. Cause I was thinking like, whenever I like heard program drums, I was thinking like Tame and Paul and like bad, bad, not good and stuff like that, where it's like, it's not like a rap or like a pop song. It's still like, it's like indie pop, you know, it's like programmed. Like Tyler, the creator has like a lot of songs on his new record that are kind of like that. Like there's like, indie rock songs it's like program drums and guitars and stuff so i i really like that one that, that, that one's gonna be i think we'll probably still play that one live just have devin play drums we need a tyler the creator eastwood collab <laughs> i would love that i'm a secret <laughs> fan <laughs> everybody go tag uh, tyler the creator tell him to collab yeah, with eastwood i'm down and speaking of three songs i was telling you i always like knowing what the artist likes playing live because seeing band i mean some of my favorite bands i've ever seen when i've seen them live they've played a song from their catalog that i've been not 50 50 but just you know not super yeah. stoked on where it's like yeah it's a good song but it's not one of my favorite songs from their releases but then when you see a band play a song live it gives you an entirely different outlook a different feel yeah. a different perception of the song so what are two three songs off of the album that you're most excited to play live when you get yeah. back to playing shows well the only songs that we played live off the record before fairweather friends and hate to hurt oh and two story window so i guess three songs because like we uh we wrote those like a while ago and like we were still playing shows like three people so we are play those uh fairweather friends always really fun to play live because it's not too difficult so i'd probably say like that one i think that's like a good like set opener and i think fall starts gonna be really fun to play live like when we pull it off and um I think waves. I think one. I think once we get waves down at practice, like, and we can play and we can pull that off live, it'll sound really cool. Uh, there's a couple that I'm nervous about, and a couple that I don't think we'll be able to play live uh, quite yet. Like two dollar hands, I'm super nervous about because I'm like screaming in that song, which I really didn't know I could do that until like we went in to record it. Because like I was trying to, I was trying to hit like a super high note and like that chorus, and I ended up just like stringing my voice, and it sound like a like a fry scream or whatever so uh, it's, it's it's not it's not easy to hit those all the time so i'm kind of nervous about that one live and fine is like acoustic driven so if we play that live we'll have to have like a third guitar player so i don't know if we'll play that one quite yet so but, with um, oh sorry with know, uh two dollar hams live is that is that a pretty big challenge going from i mean i can't sing worth a lick but is that a big challenge going from that scream in that to the way you're singing on the rest of the song and the album is that going to be what the challenge is yeah it's just like i'm not really good at doing those like kind of screams yet like nathan from microwave can do it like flawlessly because i don't know because he's just great but uh <laughs> yeah it's kind of hard like sometimes when i try to do it i like it is my voice will just crack so i have to like get like in a certain range it's like it's kind of weird it's not easy for me to hit those notes and also that is like the, the highest notes in the entire song like in that chorus of two other hands those notes are like really like at the tippy top of my range so <laughs> really pushing it yeah but i definitely really want to play that one live just because it's gotten like a lot of good feedback it's like one of the most popular ones so far and it's really upbeat so yeah i think that want to bring a good energy to the show yeah. yeah i think it's a necessary live song yeah and then you were saying waves i'm excited to hear waves live yeah as i said in the other video i think that one has a really big feel to it in certain moments of the song so i think that i think that'll go over it's obviously not as energetic as some of the other songs it's not going to be like crazy you know pop punk go wild type song yeah but i feel like the overall i guess you could say the production the sound everything it has that big feel and it it kind of culminates up and i think that's going to be exciting to hear live mm -hmm. both instrument wise and vocal wise i think that'll be bring yeah. a good tone to the show yeah definitely it'll be it'll be cool because it has like kind of like a soundscape to it like atmosphere i think that's really cool and bands can pull that off so and then so yeah. you were saying you have four different tunings on this so it'll be four different yeah. guitars you'll have to switch through the show well yeah so like two well, of the if tunings, you play yeah well two of them are just <clears throat> like drop c and d d sharp standard which is just tuning one string but like the smash like mayonnaise is in a different tuning 
and that we do like a weird like open tuning for a few songs so i'll probably i'll probably have to bring like three separate guitars when we play also just because um like the guitar tone like we recorded this record with like three or four different guitars too so like some song like false start sounds good with a strat but like hate to hurt sounds good with like a les paul so i'll probably like for like the most more like all rock songs i'm going to be playing like the les paul or like the hollow body my ivan is and then like for like the more indie rock songs i'll be playing the the fender strat so it just like depends what the vibe is you'll be busy you'll have some luggage with you yeah definitely <laughs> cool that's exciting well once the world opens back up and you guys do announce you know, like you said if you're just doing the weekend tours or mm-hmm. you're doing a summer or winter tour i encourage yeah. everybody make sure you get out there support the venue support the band see the live music yeah, i know definitely. we're all waiting to get back obviously when it's safe and we can do so without putting anybody in harm's way make sure you go to the live show and then until then stream the hell out of eastwood you know check it out spread the word we said in the other one send it to your grandparents send it to your friends uh, tag the band it's, grand- it's grandparent friendly not, <laughs> yeah. not, don't 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 send your grandma torture to him. You can send you can send that to your weird friend with the with the black skinny jeans and the black dahlia murder shirt. There may be one or two grandmothers out there that dig torture tomb, but maybe I not, think for the consensus, mine, that's for sure. Yeah, for yeah. the consensus, Eastwood's going to go over well. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, other than that, like you said, I mean, we covered a ton in the first video, and then I appreciate you giving us the backstory and mm-hmm. you know some more insights on your favorite songs on this one. Is there anything else that? people should do like i said we'll put everything in the description to follow like share all that is there just anything you want to leave us with i think that's it just like yeah just uh stream the eastwood record like share it share it around if you into vinyl get a vinyl because i think there's still some left but yeah we, we appreciate all the positive feedback and everything so far so thank you and thank you for having me this, this is fun i appreciate it yeah i enjoyed it and one last question since you mentioned it is there going to be another pressing of eastwood is there plans for a there's no pressing? plans there's no plans of yet uh we'll, we'll just see how the first pressing sells okay cool so i'm sure you'll get there go buy the first one so we can get you know some more variants yeah. out there check yeah. it out but cole thank you for doing it and thanks everybody for listening yeah thank you man all right thank you have a good one everybody